Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we will be chatting to influencers and leaders in the wine industry, winemakers, restaurants, and other businesses. Tune in every Wednesday and Friday for our latest episodes. You will find us on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcast, and Apple Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so that you do not miss out. Now, to get on with the show. Good day, everyone, and welcome back to About the Winelands. Today, I'm speaking to Carolyn Miller-Kroch of Zevenwacht. Um, hi, Carolyn. Hi, Will. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Enjoying the, the time to be able to, to chat to lots of people, using the time productively yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's been good. It's, I've spent some precious time with my daughter. I travel a lot, so this has been a time to catch up and just have some good family times. But it's been good, and obviously having a little bit of wine on the side helps too. <laughs> that's, that's always awesome when working for a wine business, right? Um, <laughs> yes. tell, us, tell us a bit about yourself and um, how you became involved with the wine industry. Well, well, currently I'm the National Sales Manager for Zemwacht Wine Estate. I've been in the industry now for going on 21 years. Um, it, I think the wine industry almost found me by coincidence. Uh, when I was studying, I decided to work at Herc Constantia Wine Estate, um, just as a sideline job while I was studying. So I was at, um, in the cellar door when I did cellar tours and listening to the senior staff and listening to the winemakers, you know, the bug really bit. So growing up in a, a family that always enjoyed wine and always used to sip along with my mum and my dad, but never really understanding what it was all about. And I think from those Kirk and Santa days, I decided I'm going to follow the wine path and see where it takes me and here I am today. <laughs> Amazing. Are your, did your, did your, were your studies related to wine at all? Well, I actually started off with law and then proceeded to move into marketing and public relations. So it was an interesting combination. And then subsequently, I did my Cape Wine Academy diploma. So it started off in a very different level and then I made a kind of move into which would be more relevant on the wine side. <laughs> wow, amazing. How long have you been with Zevenwacht? I started last year, March. So okay. just over a year now. And before mm. that? Before that, I was at Thelema Mountain Vineyards. Um, and then I was at Distel, Kena Zelze, Stiernberg, Glencarlu. Yeah. So some really amazing names that I can, you know, add to my CV. Oh, that's, that's, that's amazing. So Zevenwacht itself, can you tell us a little bit more about um, the history of Zevenwacht? Yes, of course. Zevenwacht actually has a, a wonderful history, uh, steeped in a lot of interesting tradition. And the property itself has always been on the farming side. Um, and then probably in about... I think it was about 1903, they discovered cassiterite, which is the raw ore um, that is made into tin. So the mine was basically built. So there's still the original winch and boiler on the farm today, and we actually still have the shafts on the farm, hence why one of our tiers is called the tin mine range. And then that ended probably just before World War I, and it went back into farming. Um, then in about 1992, Harold and Denise Johnson bought the farm as a going concern. So it was already planted out to vineyards. But what Harold and Denise then decided to do, to do is upgrade the entire facility. So there was a lot, a lot of vineyards that were pulled out and replanted. So uh, if it was put into understanding our true terroir and what really suits our farm, and, um, you know, we're in a wonderfully unique position. 
So, and we're very much driven towards a Savion Blanc because of where we are situated. And that went right through to the uh, vinicultural side too, and looking at the cellar and seeing, you know, best practices. So that's a bit of background on, on who we are. So Zevenwacht actually is a Dutch word and it means seven expectations. Seven expectations, right? Talking about expectations, yes. what can the <laughs> best expect or experience when visiting your estate? So we are very fortunate to have <clears throat> a beautifully sized estate. Um, and there's so much that you can do on it. Uh, for those who haven't been to Zevenwacht, I think to drive in through those gates and the first thing you see is just beautiful vineyards and mm. you drive down this oak lined road and that, that will give you of what to expect. <laughs> so we see ourselves as a lifestyle estate and we encourage people to visit our farm, not just to taste wine, but you know, come and jog on the farm. And we've got mountain bike courses. Um, there's a four by four course, uh, which the four by four club manages. You know, just simply enjoying our conservancy and, you know, and nature itself. And then over and above that, we obviously have our wine tasting center. <clears throat> so then the different, you know, um, choices that you can um, to choose to enjoy our wine. So whether it's a cheese and wine pairing, whether it's a chocolate and wine pairing, or it's simply you just choosing which wines you'd like to taste. We also have a restaurant and part of that restaurant is our picnic area. So our restaurant is very much towards uh, South African style cooking with a nice twist. Sh Chef Henna heads up the kitchen. We have lovely reviews that come through from that side. We obviously then also have our country inn. There's 13 rooms in total. Um, we have Bequena Spa that forms part of the, the enjoyment of the farm with gorgeous views. Yeah, so there's, there's quite a few choices to be made <laughs> when visiting Zevenwacht. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, it seems to me like, you know, there's been a progression in your, in, in your tourism from, uh, you know, just first it started off with wine tasting and then into a concept called wine tourism. And now you've got, you know, it seems like everybody's going into a complete package of a, a, a sort of lifestyle tourism offering in the winelands. Yes. Do you offer anything um, and, uh, like lifestyle packages where people can do that type of bookings where they come for, you know, a certain time with all kinds of stuff included, that type of thing? Yes, most definitely. You'll see now, uh, specifically going into the quieter months, never mind the fact that we're overcoming quarantine, but traditionally going into winter, we generally come out with very nice packages. So it's like a eat, sleep, stay concept. You know, stay for two nights. You know, it includes dinner at the restaurant, um, a spa package, with a wine tasting. So we do, we do a collaborative effort with all the entities on our farm. So people can truly get a, a full experience of what, what we can offer and see how beautiful the farm itself is. Once you're on Zevenwacht, there's no reason why you have to even leave, you know, if you're there for a couple of days. That's true. And your location is very uh, nice as well, you know, close to the airport and close to the rest of the uh, experience in the wine Exactly. Yeah. No, we we nicely. So we still form part of the Stellenbosch wine route. So we on the Stellenbosch side. But the nice thing is, like you said, conveniently close to the airport and surrounded by amazing other farms too to form part of that route. You know. Well, um, on that point, um, um, on the airport um, um, side is um, I see you've got a conferencing and event. Um, uh, team as well, or, or you are uh, offering that you have. Yes. Um, I suppose that's something that you specifically look to build during the winter months to fight this whole tourism winter. Most definitely, we are very reliant on the corporates to assist us through the quieter months. So we have lovely conferencing packages on offer, again, including the different 
uh, entities on the farm. And then we also advocate for functions and weddings. So if you are interested, I would suggest anyone visiting our website and linking through to our banqueting team um, for functions and weddings and through to our hotel team to assist with conferencing. Oh, that's awesome. So um, now the, you know, the important stuff, um, tell us a bit more about the wines you are producing and also um, the Zeeuwenwag winemaking philosophy. So our, our philosophy, and I think it's we're probably not the only one, but it's something that we live true to, is that wine making in essence starts in the vineyard, as we all know. And the the wonderful thing is, again, going back to who Zevenbacht is from a position point of view. So we are positioned at quite a high altitude and we have influences both from Table Bay and False Bay from a, um, a sea influence that cools down the, the vineyards completely, especially in our hot Stenbosch summers. With that said, most of our vineyards are also south to southwest facing. So that also assists from that intense heat. We find that we can have longer hang time, for example, um, for, for the grapes. We also have a lovely soil structure, mostly decomposed granite. Uh, like I said, we focus, our biggest plant planted to vine is our Sauvignon Blanc. One of the few Sauvignon Blancs that I think when you actually have, you can enjoy the the lack of huge amounts of acidity. You don't need the rennies while you're drinking it, you know, and that, <laughs> that obviously comes along with all the, the elements that make up to where we can get a beautiful, well-structured wine in general going across our, um, our all our cultivars, really. So Hagen Fuljun is our cellar master, and he's been with us now just over about a year and a half, and he very much loves focusing on because of where we are again um, on the Rhone cultivar specifically our Syrah and then also we have an old vine Chenin Blanc on our farm so that's become a, a large focus of ours too and Chardonnay so those are basically the three cultivars that we can see formulating with where we are from a, a placement point of view as a, our focus wines you know Oh, that's amazing. So your wines, um, Carolyn, where are they sold? Um, uh, I, I see you're exporting worldwide. Tell us a bit more about your markets. We are. So luckily for the garden, it's one of the great advantages of working with this brand, um, we have four different tiers to the wine. So we have from our Z collection range, which is our top tier, right through to our lifestyle range, which is our sevens, um, sevens range and with that and obviously a few in between like our tin mine and our estate so with that said it's actually it's so great to be able to target different markets with the different tiers the majority of our market sits in our own backyard we have a huge national presence of which the majority of that sits in cape town and then yes we have a global stance as well our biggest markets are Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, UK. And with that said, you know, we are spreading as much as possible. So yes, we are in America, we're in Canada, we're working on towards getting into Asia. And I am personally working on spreading our wings throughout Africa too, because what we've seen is that there is a larger request for well-priced premium South African wines in other African countries. So that's one of our that's biggest 2020 projects. Mm. That's very, very interesting. Just a quick interruption, but I do need to remind you that we are currently in a very difficult time. The South African government has set up a fund where businesses and individuals can donate to support our country through this crisis. Go to the website now and add your small donation, www dot solidarity fund dot co dot za please join us all in the fight against COVID-19 that is at www 
www.solidaritifund.co.za. Now, let's get on with the show. With the local market, I assume that, um, you know, that, that is going to be, especially with the current situation, that's going to be extremely mm -hmm. important um, when things get back to normal. Um, are you um, uh, doing anything specific? Um, uh, I mean, your local market, if you say Cape Town, I assume that's mostly restaurants or that's also the retail stores. Yeah, I think th that whole uh, question of what is the new normal is um, a very interesting one. And it's a, it's, a, it's a big concern across the entire industry. You know, the, the restaurant and hotel industry is so closely aligned to the wine industry. And I'm on quite a few different chat groups. And it's very interesting to see what people and you know, want to do from an initiative point of view. So yes, there, there are going to be huge amounts of changes. To be honest with you, I think for at least the rest of 2020, people are going to be very aware of the fact of remaining with the, the whole social distancing, um, staying more to themselves, keeping at home. So from an off-con perspective, so from a retailer perspective, and an online sales perspective for home deliveries. So for example, we've just started our own online wine shop from Zevenwacht. That is advantageous for us. That, you know, we can see huge growths forthcoming after you know, quarantine. But on the other hand, sadly, the restaurants and hotels are really going to suffer. So collectively, we've been sitting together as an industry and coming up with initiatives that we can put forward and assist um, and what you know how what do we do we have to reach the consumer assist with them coming into a restaurant be aware that obviously you know again tables will have to be far apart there's going to be huge amounts of sanitize, sanitization going on there's going to be less people being able to sit in a restaurant how can we help them is it from a discount structure is it from you know um getting a an initiative to assist with a you know group funding so yeah there's there's a lot under discussion of what is viable and what isn't time will tell um, but we will be in this together and we stand together well i mean that's the, the message i get from everybody i'm talking to in the industry you know everybody's working together and you know rethinking basically um their business model um, is there anything else that you have in mind? Um, I mean, of course, um, I mean, it wine sales is one aspect of your business. Um, the big advantage yeah. of, a, of, of a place like yourself is that you have an outside experience as well, which means social distancing is a bit easier. And I think people will be keen to, more keen to go to outside spaces than maybe in inside spaces. Definitely, definitely. So again, it's, it's a bit of a tough time, you know, with us going into cooler weather for those who are, you know, prepared to brave, to carry on running through the wine farm. Every day when I arrive at the farm, it's so wonderful to see groups of people arriving to do the jog around the farm or the mountain biking trails and stuff. So obviously that will still remain open. And, you know, from a health perspective, it's wonderful to be able to get out there once we have all been feels like you know the four walls pulling down the four walls getting Unlocked. some fresh air and exercise <laughs> but we will have to maintain as much as we see ourselves as a wine brand we also have a restaurant and a hotel on a farm too yeah. so we kind of have a foot on both sides um so we will have to look at different ways of encouraging people to enjoy our um our facilities but being aware of you know what like i said before the new normal is going to be so that yeah we we've we've had conversations we'll sit down um you know in a group and have larger discussions of the next 12 to 24 months and where we can assist the best we can and that goes i think from a global discussion it's not just south africa so it's it's going to be a very interesting rollout, um, 
And to be honest, I think time will tell. We can put initiatives in place and it will be adjusted and changed. We'll literally have to be able to go with the flow and be flexible, you know. It's going to be interesting times. Um, Carolyn, I see Zivenwacht is a member of this PWI, the Biodiversity and Wine Initiative. What does that mean? Yes. So we actually, again, like I mentioned, we are very lucky to have a fairly big farm. 100 hectares are under vine, but then what we've done is actually... Um, so from about 2000 time, 2009, apologies, we became a member of the BWI. What we've done is we've put 80 hectares of a very um, special biome aside called rhinosterfelt. So it's under a lot of stress. There's very little rhinosterfelt left within the Western Cape. And through a, a conservancy as part of the Butler Ray Conservancy, so it's ourselves and our neighbours that have put a certain amount of hectares of rhinosterfelt aside. That obviously encourages soil health, protection of birds of prey and smaller mammals. You know, we've got about 150 to 200 different species of um, flora. So it's just assisting and having that balance between the farming factor and the, the mother nature factor and making sure we're not intruding and not being greedy as to, you know, what we need to do to make sure everything is looked after efficiently and sufficiently. And it's also about farming methods, you know, ensure that we're not using anything that's going to affect the natural flora and fauna. Um, and just be careful how we manage what we do use in the vineyards and so on and so forth. So keep it as natural as possible. Well, I think, I think this is a growing trend worldwide, um, and especially your new markets, your, your millennials, your new, you know, they are, seems to me, yes. they're more interested in this type of thing than in the old, um, you know, traditional wine history and that type of stuff. Completely agree. And it's quite interesting when you speak to uh, the Nordic countries, one of the first mm. questions is around, you know, the, the conservancy and how we protect our farms and how we look after, you know, flora and fauna going through into the, the how our people are looked after too. And the other question oh, yeah. is whether we vegan as well. So those are two very definite trends coming out. And we can happily say we are now vegan. We're offering vegan sure. wines. We've walked away from all animal products within the winemaking process. I was wondering about that. Um, um, <laughs> I, I always assume that, that all wines are vegan, but now it seems to me there's a, there's, there, there, there is a difference. So, so, so can you enlighten me a little bit more? It's quite interesting. Sure, yeah. It's, a, a lot of people don't really realize that, that exactly as you said, we weren't vegan. But when you go into the larger process of how the wine is made, so for example, when it comes down to the filtration, so the fining of the wine, uh, collecting the, the solid particles out of the juice itself, for example. We used to use uh, certain animal products. Uh, so, for example, you can actually basically use egg whites, and that almost works as like a consomme. I don't know if you know the soup, consomme. So it's a, it's a clear soup, and they add the egg white to attract all the solid particles so that you end up with a beautiful, bright, clear soup. And it's exactly the same concept within the winemaking side. But obviously it being egg white, it's, you know, it's uh, an animal product. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are different, there are different methodologies. Um, I'm trying to remember the other one. I think it's called an isotope or something. It's like a fish bladder. <laughs> oh, <my> word, <laughs> <Powder>. yeah. <laughs> something like that that is added but again obviously it's an animal product so officially all wines from the 2019 harvest have moved over to um, being vegan so now we have moved over to different methods where we use only plant-based or for example benzonite clay so there, there are different versions and there's different products on the market basically from like a, a starch version through to um, a kelp version. And like I said, like a, using a clay, 
but more and more brands are moving towards uh, using plant-based and it's it's I don't think it's just going to be fad or fashion it's not just a trend it's now becoming more of a way of life a healthier way of living you know but definitely I mean it's a it's a huge trend um so Carolyn um been interesting so far but now what I would like, like to hear from you personally is what is the most important thing that you've learned from your wine journey sure <laughs> it's been a very long journey <laughs> um, like 21 years later there's a lot learned you know I think in the early days the complete naivety to obviously being an older now I don't have to pick my age, right? <laughs> no, man, I can, hear, also, I can hear you're still a youngster, so, so uh, stop oh, teasing us. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> it's so sweet. <laughs> um, but, you know, for me, I think the biggest lesson I've learned, bar many others, but one that really sticks with me and which I apply to my day-to-day -day workings from you know, putting strategy together right through to when I actually am... Um, speaking to consumers at wine shows, for example, is the, the KISS methodology. So keep it stupid simple. You know, there's no reason to overcomplicate the way we talk about wine, for example, or strategies that we put together. At the end of the day, keep it as clear and simple as possible that everyone can understand where we want to go and what we want to do. That's, I think that for me has been the biggest lesson learned and it's through trial and error and it's through mistakes. And as you well know, we all learn from our mistakes. But if, if I can recommend for anyone to stick to that simplicity of understanding wine, explain wine, you know, when you, when you speak to your, your consumer at the wine show, they don't really want to know about pH, acidity, barrel ferment, malolactic fermentation. I mean, yes, you obviously have the people who will specifically ask for that. But your general wine consumer actually just enjoys that liquid in the bottle. They want to learn about your brand truth, the history, who you are sometimes, you know, and just have good honest conversations it doesn't have to be complicated i like that so carolyn you can you give us your uh, very own wine quote or a favorite wine quote um well are there lots of wine quotes that i don't know if it's appropriate <laughs> <laughs> That's I, think nice. me, <laughs> <laughs> I think for me um you know wine should never be seen as an unattainable subject whether it's from an understanding perspective or from a pricing perspective wine shouldn't be put on this pedestal so it's sitting at some mountain top you know um, and we have to change the way we we talk about wine the way we we express the subject let it be less intimidating and let it be more inclusive so at the end of the day, I mean, I don't care how you're going to drink my wine or with what you're going to drink it. If you have chosen to buy my wine off the shelf or chosen my wine off that wine menu, I love you. Full stop. Thank you. Done. That's <laughs> deal done. <You> know? <laughs> that for me is, is just very important going into this new cycle we have to expand our market. And it's not necessarily from a country perspective. We have to expand our drinking market, who we are talking to, who we, who we want part of a broader conversation. And currently, we aren't able to do that with the way we are expressing wine conversations and brand. It, it has to just be simplified, more open, more honest, less intimidating very very wise words carolyn um how do people if people want to get hold of zevenwacht um where did they find you how did they get hold of you 
the best way is to go onto our website. All information is on there. So it's www.zevervacht.co.za. So whether you want to speak to myself, my details are there, or the Office for General Queries, from banqueting through to booking accommodation or wine tasting, all the information is on our website. Okay, excellent. We'll put those links um, in the description. Carolyn, it's Great. been a pleasure to talk uh, talking to you and uh, thank you for taking the time and um, enjoy the rest of your lockdown. Thank you. Well, it was wonderful to catch up with you and best of luck for the lockdown to you too. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description.